to be here uh, to give uh, some reflections on um, uh, food security in Africa today, uh, sort of synthesis. Uh, and also, um, I would like to thank uh, Professor Kwajo and the organizers uh, for uh, the invite and giving me this opportunity. Well, um, of course, um, as uh, you may see from uh, the topic of the slide, you can see um, the difference between academicians and administrators. Uh, academicians actually uh, stick to the assignment, whereas administrators actually uh, go around. Uh, uh, I just uh, knew that he has uh, made some adjustment and uh, his presentation is on towards integrating uh, the bigger picture, which actually gives us uh, additional um, perspective into full security issues. Uh, but then uh, I said I can uh, just do my assignment within that context and capture also his uh, uh, presentations. Now, um, from his presentation, uh, you may have just seen that or noticed that he has added another layer to the layer which we have been introduced at uh, various occasions, even in this uh, um, uh, conference. Uh, we can uh, just recall uh, our memories from the presentation of uh, Dr. Eleni and uh, also uh, from a series of questions raised by um, uh, Professor Kwajo that there are a lot of things to address. And then uh, this actually uh, puts me to the fact that this food security situations in Africa is by far a very complex problem. But if it is very complex, and we believe that uh, addressing food security is addressing a complex problem, how can we actually address uh, this issue? Well, uh, first of all, we have to recognize that um, if it is complex, uh, it might be uh, too overwhelming for an individual to successfully address it, an individual community, an individual household, an individual country, and, of course, uh, an individual region. Therefore, it will become a uh, more larger and larger issue to be addressed uh, collectively. And, of course, we have to take care that if we are including more and more issues into uh, addressing food security situations, we have to distinguish it from uh, considering is it as a chaos, which actually leads us into confusions. If uh, complexities are to be considered as a synonym for a chaos, because both actually integrate a lot of issues, then uh, you will not have a solution for a chaos, uh, and you will actually end up into confusions. But complexity in addressing food security actually is not equivalent to a chaos. It has actually a solution, but that solution actually requires creative and integrative solutions and we require creative and integrative approach. And of course, that means we actually need to um, leave our thinking of, uh, in terms of uh, disciplines. That means um, agronomists uh, should not actually think that it is only uh, his discipline that actually uh, brings about a solution. Uh, well, the infrastructure in general should not actually consider that uh, the best way of uh, and pro providing access is uh, road and so on, or pathologists, the same thing, economists actually coming with a series of recommendations which actually uh, tell uh, policymakers and others so that uh, that would be a solution. Uh, therefore, uh, what we require is that since we have a lot of problems and the problems are complex, then we have to integrate. That means we have uh, to stop uh, specialist thinking uh, rather than specialist thinking uh, then we have uh, to integrate uh, our things together. Well, another, no, no. Uh, another thing is uh, that um, we have to make use of uh, the available information. Well, a lot of information is uh, available, um, as already said, uh, through a variety of media. The CGI centers uh, do have provide us a lot of information on, on food security. And if you just go to um, their publications or um, websites, there are a lot of uh, ideas we can capture. Well, uh, FEOSNET, uh, the uh, famine and family early warning system, actually provides you a lot of information. 
And also, FAO actually provides us a lot of information. But the problem is that whether we actually use that information to lead uh, our actions. Now, um, of course, we, we actually believe that uh, this information should act uh, to uh, lead us uh, to um, solve part of uh, the uh, food insecurity problems. But let us see uh, how this information actually being used, how and uh, how they are impacting us. Just I took this picture um, from um, FEO's um, website, uh, but it will have an implication. Well, this actually indicates this is available for every month, uh, even three months ahead and so on. That has been there for a number of years. Every time you can see uh, what is happening uh, in the near future or this month and so on regarding the situation of food security in various regions. But this has been available, for instance, at the beginning of uh, 2011 for the month of March, April and so on. But how many countries or donors or recipient countries or the ones which are affected by food insecurity actually acted to that information? That means these pictures actually indicate that uh, drought is coming. If appropriate action is not taken, then famine is looming. But most countries, be it the donors or uh, the recipient countries or African countries, actually kept quiet uh, as if uh, they don't have any information. But then around March and April, the next picture actually came up. Well, it's not the aim of uh, this picture is not to show you some uh, disturbing pictures because I know that we have seen a lot more disturbing pictures. But now the action actually came. The action came. That means donors uh, started to blame the recipients, the recipient uh, started to blame the donors, uh, and so on. But what does this imply to us? The first one is information which is made available by the scientific community, by the researcher, and so on. That means by the majority of people in this room. The second picture, the second, this picture is a picture actually provided by journalists. And now we have to question, is it we, the researchers, who actually engage ourselves with decision makers or the journalists? Therefore, we have to rethink that we have to actively engage, not only providing information, but we have to actively engage with the decision makers, the policy makers, be it from the donors, the recipients, and so on, and so that the information that we provide will actually lead their, their immediate action. Therefore, still uh, we have to reconsider our engagement with, with policy makers. Of course, I appreciate um, the engagement of International Policy Research Institute with uh, uh, countries uh, through the country program. I know well, uh, particularly uh, they do well with my country, Ethiopia. Uh, and therefore, we have to continue uh, this active engagement so that the information that we provide on food security will be taken up and guide our uh, actions. Well, uh, the, the other um, thing is, uh, the other thing which I actually uh, would like to talk about is um, we don't have uh, a problem of listing uh, uh, problems and listing our problems, and also we don't have actually a problem of listing grand ideas. Well, uh, among the grand ideas, we can take that uh, a number of countries are actually uh, putting in place uh, projects for highways, uh, very big highways, uh, dams, railways, uh, ICT investments, and so on. With, well, this is a grand idea, and it's, it's welcome. And also, uh, we know that um, the commitment made uh, for CADEP is also a great idea. Uh, that means uh, you have actually adequate uh, information. I think, uh, I believe that uh, in this room, uh, everybody has uh, adequate dose of uh, CADEP. I don't want uh, to, to, to stress much on that, because um, what we actually uh, could understand is that uh, CADEP is a commitment by um, the leaders of our countries, and it's a commitment made uh, by our leaders, and we have, uh, to some extent, abided to it, uh, one way or the other. And we know that uh, it is still uh, a leading uh, or a heart into uh, the 
agricultural growth and transformation, which actually changes uh, the food security situations in, in this country. And therefore, uh, I don't think that you need to have uh, overdose of uh, uh, that. That means uh, if you have optimal dose, uh, that will be uh, adequate. Uh, therefore, uh, we have uh, to believe that uh, CADEP is uh, a good process. Uh, actually, um, an interesting uh, idea that we can actually uh, capitalize on it uh, to um, uh, fight against uh, hunger and poverty in Africa. And uh, another point is that uh, some, some, some um, uh, leaders and uh, some uh, countries actually have also still a very good idea which actually turns out to be uh, into strategies. For instance, uh, among uh, a very uh, good ideas uh, which actually required commitments uh, and leadership is uh, the one uh, which is known as uh, the Zero Hunger Project in, 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 in Brazil. Uh, well, uh, we have talked about uh, greed evolutions uh, a number of times, and why not uh, we actually also learn from uh, Zero Hunger Project in, 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 in Brazil, uh, because uh, through Zero Hunger uh, campaign, uh, Brazil uh, then actually changed uh, that campaign into uh, a strategy which actually uh, has made a dramatic change in, in uh, food security situations. Of course, that involved uh, a lot of integrated actions, uh, which can be adapted uh, to African conditions. Uh, it actually, uh, uh, actually required uh, the setting up of uh, popular uh, restaurants, uh, the setting up of uh, public uh, preference uh, purchase to promote uh, market for smallholder farmers, and a food bank, of course, which is very much different from the operation of um, Grey Reserve. Food bank is very much different from uh, Grey Reserve for concepts. And therefore, uh, we can take also these options uh, to look at how we can address um, food insecurity situations in, in Africa. Well, uh, coming up to uh, the main point, uh, the main point, well, um, the current situation um, is actually not good uh, in Africa, uh, whether it's considered in terms of regions, countries, and so on. Uh, there are achievements in, in a few countries, but when we consider uh, Africa in, in total, um, well, uh, we are depending on extreme imports, import bills. Even though you see um, uh, the food balance sheet of FAO, you may see that um, Africa is actually greater than the uh, minimum required on average. But that actually came as a result of this 40 and 50 um, billion dollars expenditure, import. Therefore, that cannot indicate adequately that we are uh, producing our own food. Uh, therefore, uh, for Africans, we have uh, to take into account whether we actually need to stick to um, food security, which actually considers production, import, and so on and so on, and look at whether we actually look uh, towards food sovereignty, or uh, some actually say uh, food um, self-sufficiency, uh, even though food sovereignty and food uh, self-sufficiency are uh, not synonymous. And also, should we actually push our countries or governments to stick to the right to food? Because in, in a variety of um, documents, we have uh, this, uh, the right to food as uh, part of uh, human right. And of course, in, in um, South Africa, they have explicitly written that in their constitution, everybody has the right to sufficient food. In case he or she fails so, the government is obliged to make it so, or to make it happen. This is clearly written in their constitution. That means everybody has the right to food, and if he cannot or she cannot afford to uh, achieve that, the government is obliged uh, to make it happen. Therefore, uh, this is uh, a concept of right to food. Therefore, why not we uh, actually also try uh, the other approach? Uh, well, uh, the um, 
Other indicative uh, figures are uh, emerging, that means from um, global hunger index, for instance, which we have, uh, everybody has uh, this global hunger index because uh, the document is there uh, from, uh, published by IFRI uh, World Hunger Health and uh, World Concern, uh, uh, Concern Worldwide, which actually indicated also the extent of hunger and our achievement during the last uh, 20 years. Uh, but just the earlier one. Uh, but uh, from uh, FAO results also, uh, you can see um, a variety of figures coming out. This is a trend, for instance. In 2003-05, the estimate was 217. Well, data based on uh, 2007 and earlier, 2008 and earlier, give you a figure of 240 million. But recent figures, we actually considered the uh, impact of uh, price volatility and increase actually puts that figure greater than 290 million. That means the trend is increasing. That is not actually what uh, we wished. The trend could have actually uh, declined. And also the uh, global hunger, hunger index gives you another, another um, uh, figure what the uh, food insecurity situation actually looks like in, in, in Africa. Well, I can take very quick uh, synthesis of that. That means, well, some 15 countries improved their global hunger index, according to that document, of between 1990 and uh, 2011, 2010. But it's only Ghana from African countries who actually achieved that. There are 15 countries in, in, in the list, but it's only Ghana from Africa. But the other side actually tells you those countries actually lost even. That means the global hunger index has increased. There are six countries, there are uh, I think five countries, uh, but you will find, from six countries you will find five African countries who actually lost in terms of global, uh, their um, global hunger index. And it's very much distressing, particularly for instance, you see uh, the extreme loser is um, Democratic Republic of Congo, which actually lost in terms of its uh, global hunger index by 62%. Uh, and you can see that uh, you can, if you, you know few of geography, you can actually estimate or uh, expect that what is happening to that country because uh, Democratic Republic of Congo is rich in, in resources uh, which are convenient for agricultural production. And agricultural production is about food. Food insecurity is about food. But you can see that food insecurity is far beyond production, far beyond uh, production and the natural resources uh, availability. That means uh, it goes into uh, the political economy. Well, uh, Finally, um, uh, what I would like to say is that uh, the condition in uh, the food security condition in, in Africa is uh, not getting uh, better, even though there are a few achievements here and there. Uh, therefore, uh, we have to go uh, to our home and our office places with assignment uh, that we have not yet started our job. We have not yet started our job. That means a lot of things are uh, ahead of us. And thank you. Thank you.